Put a creative spin on your meals with the Chefman Electric Spiralizing Combo Kit. You get three blade styles, Spiralize, Ribbon, and Grate. Equipped with a powerful 300 watt ultra quiet motor, this spiralizer and immersion hand blender quickly purees sauces, mixes beverages, spiralizes vegetables, and more. Making gluten free, low carb, and creative meals with just the touch of a button. Get the most out of your purchase with access to clubchefman.com for recipes, tutorials, and personalized help from a chef. Hi, I'm Mary Rogers, and this is the Cuisinart Slicer, Shredder, and Spiralizer, and it happens to be an electric version. It's really simple and easy to use. Here you'll have your removable bowl, which holds five cups of um, sh sliced, shredded, or spiralized ingredients. This is your angled um, food pusher and feed tube. And this is used when you're doing slicing and shredding. And I just want to show you something on the top. Right here, there's a, a lock, an unlock and a lock icon. You're going to line that up and then twist and turn, and that's what locks it into place. So the other thing I want to show you is uh, what else comes with your... Um, slicer, shredder, and spiralizer. This is the feed tube that you'll use for um, spiralizing. The same thing, you lock it into place. The main difference is it's completely upright and not angled. And then in addition, you get four different types of cutting cones, and we mark them for you. So the burgundy is um, shred and spaghetti. The blue is um, crinkle and ribbon cut. The green is um, slice and ribbon. And then lastly, we have um, the black one, which is coated shred and spaghetti. So what you'll do when you're going to be making your choices is, um, like I mentioned, the angled one is for slicing and shredding. So if you use the black cone, we're going to get regular shreds. If we use the, um, if we actually use the, uh, angled feed tube and you'll get spaghetti cut if you use the spiralizing feed tube. So the cone has a little handle. You're going to, there's an arrow right here. And the arrow just needs to be lined up with one of the six notches that's in this, which goes inside here. So just make sure you do that correctly or, if it, or else it will not seat properly in place. Then you just um, line up the, um, the unlock and lock, and you twist it to turn it into place. So it's so simple and easy to use. What we're going to do now is remove the feed tube. We're going to turn the unit. We're going to put the um, zucchini in, and I'm just going to get ready. with the, This is a, a nice tip. Like if you first start using this, just get yourself all ready, and then you can turn the unit on. worked really well. So we're just going to put that there. So what I want to show you is when you just switch out the, the feed tube, we're going to do the same thing, but I'm going to just use the same cone and then use the spiralizing attachment so you can see the difference between the two. So I'm going to switch to the upright feed tube, lock it into place. You're going to um, get this position and this you're going to also make sure that you get it um, embedded into the food. That's going to help a lot when you start spiralizing. So let's get started. So look how great that came out. Beautiful ribbons. And what a lot of people like to do is, this is a nice substitute for things like pasta. If you want to make, um, use this as a noodle, you can toss it, you can cook it very lightly, you can toss it with a tomato sauce, and it makes a good spaghetti substitute. So that's um, that cut. I'm going to do, uh, pick one more, I'm going to try one more, just so you can see how nice that came out. So let's see what this one is. 
This is slicer ribbon. I'm going to do this one. Whoops. Take this out. This set it there. Put in this cone. And remember, like I mentioned, line up the arrow with one of the six notches. Just, and the really great thing, too, is you have very little waste with this. Put the feed tube back on. Lock it into place. And now we're going to try um, doing a little different uh, cut with zucchini. So let's check our ribbon. So look how beautiful that came out. You can make unbelievable fresh salads using these type of things. Like I said, you can use it as a, a pasta substitute, but it's really um, beautiful to look at. And it's also a lot of fun to use. So there you have it, the Cuisinart Slicer, Shredder, and Spiralizer. How to Spiralize with your KitchenAid Spiralizer with Peel, Core, and Slice Attachment. With a secured attachment on your KitchenAid stand mixer and the skewer and fruit or vegetable in place, install the peeler first if using it while spiralizing by sliding it into the bottom of the blade carrier until it clicks into place. Insert either the extra fine, fine, or medium spiralizing blade into the holder at the top. Pull the release lever, then push the blade carrier towards the stand mixer and align the blade core with the center of your food. Press the blade core into the fruit or vegetable for added stability. Move the lever to the stir speed, then gradually increase it to speed 4. Choose the extra fine spiralizing blade for carrots and radishes, the fine spiralizing blade for zucchini and beets, or use the medium spiralizing blade for zucchini, sweet potatoes, and butternut squash. The Spiralizer with Peel, Core, and Slice Attachment, spinning new creations in your kitchen. From KitchenAid. Here's a quick overview of the Pile PKES PR26. It's an electric food spiralizer. This is what it'll look like when you first take it out of the package. On the top here, pull this out. As you can see, this is your little plunger right here. This is to help push the food in. It's gonna go into the top, just like that. In here, you can when you're done spiralizing, you can actually take this out, clean this, it just slides right back in. On the back of the unit, you'll see this little door here. If you open it up, 
you'll see the different implements that you can use to put on for different kinds of cutting, slicing, and dicing. Also, you'll see your power cords in here. For this example, we're going to put this on, which is your slicer. I'm going to plug it in to an outlet. If you're looking at this, you'll see that it has double grooves, and there's a spot right here with double grooves. So just match them up. And click it in. Just like that. Then you take this unit from before, you get it on here, and spin it until it locks in. See how that locked in? Here, I'll do it again so you can see. Okay, so it's locked in nice and firm, and you'll know it's working when you hit the button, the on button, and it actually turns. If this is loose and it's not locked in, it won't work. So, you make sure it's locked in. Put your vegetables that you want to inside. Lightly put the plunger on top. Start the spiralizer and then push in your product with this slowly. And it'll come out into the bowl down here. Belton, welcome to my New Orleans kitchen. Now, today I want to make potato pancakes, and to do that, I'm going to use the Presto 15 inch tilt and fold griddle along with the Presto professional salad shooter slicer shredder. Yes, you know, I love getting kids involved in the kitchen, and this is something where you know. As a kid, my mom had me help. I learned how to peel potatoes when I got to a certain age. And then she taught me how to cut potatoes real safe. And then came the grating the potato. We're gonna make potato pancakes. Potatoes are by far one of my most favorite foods. Now, with a regular shredder, yeah, you had to be real careful as a kid because I think mom had you do this because you didn't have to need a nail file for your fingernails. It automatically happened. But what I'm going to do today is get the kids involved. We're going to use this to shred our potatoes. Now, you notice I have our potatoes peeled and I have them sitting in cold water. We're going to use a russet potato. We could do a red potato. We could use a Yukon Go. Use the potato that you particularly like. And the reason we put the potatoes in water is so that they don't turn brown. You know, you peel a potato, it'll start changing colors pretty quick but by keeping it in cold water, it'll help it from changing colors. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna take our potato, just shake off the excess water, drop it right in, put our lid on. Now, here's what we have to do. And you know, the first time we do this, show the kids how it's done. We're gonna put a little pressure on the top and hold it close to the bowl. And now all we have to do is turn it on. What kid would not want to help cook in the kitchen if they got to do this? All right, here, let's do one more potato. And you know, you don't need a potato that's huge, okay? You want something, and if you do, the only thing you have is a huge potato, cut it in half. But what's nice is this takes all of the work about, you know, why have one arm bigger than the other arm, all right? But I love getting my sons in the kitchen, and here, this is the best way to do it. You know what? 
give a kid a toy because you know what? I want to do one more. This is so much fun. Okay, so here's what might be the problem. You might have to get two because you might not let the kids get to it. Now I better stop because if I don't stop, we'll be here all day with me just everything I can get my hand on, I'll get it shredded. Look at that. And all the fingers, nice and fresh. So here's what we're gonna do with this. Little bit of salt. Now, the other thing I'm gonna do, I am not gonna rinse these potatoes. We had them soaking in water so they didn't change colors. I'm not gonna rinse them because we want this starch to help hold together. Notice, look how nice and thin this is, okay? This made a nice thin slice that we can't do with a knife, okay? It's actually a little finer shred than if we'd have used the shredder to shred it. And because we're making potato pancakes, this little thinness here to the potato is gonna cook nice and crisp. So, a little bit of kosher salt. I am going to put in a little bit of my Creole seasoning. We're also gonna put in a touch of flour. And this will help hold everything together, along with an egg that's beaten. And that's also gonna help hold things together. And a little bit of onion. Now this is a little white onion. You could do a green onion. You could do a little red onion. I like a little white or yellow onion. Not too strong a flavor. And look, now we just mix this together. You know, a lot of times it's about visiting at that table. So if you want, you could do this ahead of time. Let this sit in the refrigerator until you get ready while other things are getting ready. And you can put this in the refrigerator 15, 20 minutes, get everything else ready because this won't take long to cook. So now let this sit here for a moment and let me show you what I've done with our griddle. I've taken our griddle and have set the temperature at 350 degrees, okay? Now, I'm using it in a flat surface. I'm also taking, even though this is nonstick, for these potatoes, I want a little bit of oil. I'm gonna use a little olive oil with this and just drizzle a little olive oil on. It, it mostly gives us a nice flavor, all right? And we could take our mixture. Now, some folks like to put this in a bowl and, and get it forming in a ball and shape it in a ball. Where like here, for example, you could put some in a bowl like this, pack it down, turn it over on the griddle, take your spatula and just press it flat. There we go, all right? Or you could free ball it if you want. Just put it, take your spoon, place it on the griddle in a little pile, take your spatula and then press it flat. Here, let's put a little bit, let's do one more this way. And you know, you can make them big, you can make them small. I'm gonna tell you something that I like to do. Here, let's get another one in there. And you can start to see what I'm talking about with the potatoes by it being shredded fairly thin because we want that shredded fairly thin because it helps with the cooking time. Oh, look at you. Look what you did. We have room for one more. Let's put that one right in the middle. All right. See, this is gonna get nice and crispy. That's, that's what we want. What we're looking for here is that that potato is gonna crisp up, the inside is gonna stay nice and moist, and our temperature will maintain 
so we don't have to worry about adjusting it. The control master heat control regulates the temperature automatically. And the smell of this, this is why I said, if you put this in the refrigerator, get everything done, get everything ready, put these on at the end. And if you want to make them ahead of time, once you make them, you can put them in a pan, keep them in a low oven to keep them warm, okay? But I tell you, it's a great way to get the family involved. The potato, as you see, goes right into the bowl. And the griddle has a large cooking area with a non-stick surface. And what that means, things won't stick when it cooks, and also, it's easy cleanup. Plus, it's handy to make enough for the entire family. It's versatile for cooking the entire meal right on your griddle. Plus, the cooking surface adjusts. Now, here's what's nice by having our cooking surface that tilts. We can make eggs, pancakes, sandwiches laying flat, but then we could go ahead and put meats on like bacon and burgers and chops, have our cooking surface tilt, that way the fat runs off and our meat stays nice and crisp. Once you clean this, you fold in those legs and the drip tray will get locked in place. Then on its side, I just store it right into the cabinet. I think our potato pancakes are ready to flip. Crispy, that's what that is. When you see brown like that, that's what you say, crispy. Now, when you think of pancakes, of course, everybody thinks breakfast. A potato pancake, of course, this is very similar to a hash brown, so you could serve this in the morning, but what I like to do with these potato pancakes, I like to serve them at dinner time. You know, a nice salad, put this potato pancake next to it, and now you could use those same toppings that you would on a baked potato. Sour cream, a little bit of chives, a little cheddar cheese. And if you want, you could actually put cheese in this recipe. Personally, once it cooks, I like to a little fresh cheese right on the top. Just grate it right on the top, right on the plate. You hear that? That sounds like they are ready. So here, we're just gonna put them on a paper towel, just for that little bit of oil. But as you can see, there is not much oil at all. Here, let's make sure we turn it off. And now to plate this, I just like to take our pancake, set it right on the plate. Here, let's get, here, you, come here big guy. Little fresh parsley, you know, a little dollop of sour cream on the top. And you know, if you have little kids, hey, I tell you what, why not just let them go ahead, put a little dollop of ketchup right on top. Thanks to the Presto Salad Shooter and Tilt and Fold Griddle, we have wonderful potato pancakes.